Hello, my name is Hayden from FoulsOnFantasy.com and I have a question for you. Are you looking for a free open source alternative to Flash or other 2D animation softwares? Do you want one that's simple and beginner friendly? Well, I've got one for you today. Wick Editor is a free open source animation web tool that also has an inbuilt script editor for advanced users. Today I'm going to be showing you the animation side of things from my little time using it. From what I've seen so far, you have all the necessary tools to create great 2D animations. The simplicity of the editor is one of its greatest assets, as it is both clean and uncrowded, making it an ideal working environment for those who are just beginning, or even those looking for a streamlined alternative to other more advanced softwares such as Toon Boom, Blender, or Open Tunes. The editor can be found at www.wikeditor.com. There are currently two versions that you can use, the open beta, which is accessible from the landing page link, or the alpha, which is found in the forums. As it is the most accessible and visible, I'm going to be focusing on the open beta 0.15.2 as of this recording. But all that I'm about to show you relates to the alpha version too, so if you would like to use that, you may. Uh, they advise on their site to use this tool in either Firefox or Chrome, so I'm sorry if anyone's using an alternative browser or Edge, um, but you might have to consider switching over to either Firefox or Chrome if you would like to use this. Upon creating our new workspace, we can set our resolution via the project settings. To begin creating an image, we first have to set a keyframe. We can do that by pressing the plus button on the timeline. We will be greeted with a new frame with a non-solid circle inside. This non-solid circle means that there is no information on the current frame. We can fix that. If we press B, B for brush, we will have access to our brush tool. We can then start drawing. You'll see that when I draw, nothing is happening. This is because my brush color is set to white. To change the color, we're going to press our color picker, then pick a new color. We cannot, however, begin drawing with our new chosen color until we confirm our selection by pressing the tick button. So just remember that we have to confirm our color selection always before we begin drawing again. It's a bit different from other softwares, but I believe this is just because it is a web-based software. Next, we are going to want to create a new frame for our animation. To do that, I'm going to press my plus button again on a free frame slot. In animation, having an onion skin, or another way to quickly glance at previous and future images, is important. To turn onion skin on, we're going to press this very cute looking onion to the side of our timeline. But you will notice that because we have set our next frame four frames out in front of our first, no onion skin is appearing. This is because the frames have to be touching in order for the software to consider them next to one another. We can easily extend the length of our first frame by dragging the frame out. We now get our onion skin and can begin drawing our next keyframe. You would then go about creating your next frames as such, making sure that you drag and scale the frames so that they are touching the ones behind and ahead of it in the timeline. To play our animation, we can press the play button, or alternatively, we can press enter. We can also press shift enter to play our animation on a loop. So this is very useful when we're trying to just get a feel of how our animation is actually progressing and how well it flows. To color our, well, let's admit it, pretty sloppy animation is also very easy. We can create a new layer by pressing this add layer button to the side of our timeline, right near the onion skin button. It will automatically create a layer below our first layer. Like in photo editing softwares, the lower a layer is on the workspace, the lower it is rendered in Z space, meaning it will appear behind the layers above it. We can use this to our advantage by outlining where we want our color to go then using the fill brush to create our color using the frames above as a reference. 
just make sure that when doing this that you have your layer that you want to be your color layer selected otherwise you're just going to be drawing over your already created outlines Exporting our animation is easy as well. We simply press export, then our file will be downloaded through our browser, depending on which file format we choose. However, the lack of an image sequence export is one thing that I find a bit frustrating. Uh, if I have missed it or I'm mistaken, please be sure to let me know in the comments below though. And there we have it, a very quick and sloppy animation done. Now. I think this is a great little tool. As I said before, the simplicity of the editor is its greatest asset and it is just perfect for beginners and maybe even advanced users who just want to jump right in without all the fiddly stuff that comes with other alternatives. I myself prefer Blender as I am more comfortable with the nuances of that software and can easily navigate through its many menus and functions. However, as a free alternative to Flash or other 2D animation softwares goes, this one has my tick of approval but I do wish it had a bit more export options. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful or informative, be sure to hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more content like this, please hit that subscribe and bell button so that you'll be notified upon its release. Thank you so much for watching. This is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com signing off.